this is what I've ended up with. Say, are you are you playing Bukowski coming up soon? I could do Bukowski. I could do like a, an evil killer clown. Ooh, that gave me shivers. Hey there, human. With me, Rain Wilson. Hey everybody, it's me, Rain Wilson. Uh, I think you've met Poe before. I wanted to reintroduce Poe to everyone. Um, Poe, as long as he is in contact with a human, can do pretty much anything. He'll go anywhere and do anything as long as there is human contact. Say hi, Poe. Welcome to Hey There, Human. My name is Rain Wilson. I'm your host. The guinea pigs are squeaking in the background, and Poe is here on my lap. Nick Offerman is the guest today. Isn't that exciting? Uh, one of my favorite human beings on the planet. I'm not sure if he's bearded right now. I don't think he's as bearded as he usually is. Poe, it's time to go down. Love you, buddy. When I started the show, I really was pretty sure that by the end of May, we were going to have some hard answers. That Scientists would have figured some stuff out and we'd kind of know what was working and what wasn't. We know a little bit more than late March, but not a whole lot more than March. So um, that is freaking me out. How do you navigate through mental health hardships when they arise? Well, um, that is a, a, an excellent question. And really what that is about is that Mental health is one of the topics that we uh, tackle here on Hey There Human. We talk about a lot of different tools that we can use to help us in these anxious and difficult times. And that's how I think about mental health, is I think about having a toolkit, just like a carpenter has a tool belt with all the different tools in the tool belt. When we have mental health hardships, we have to develop a tool belt so that when these things hit us, we can pick which tool is right for the occasion and use it. So what are some, uh, what are some tools in the, in the tool belt? Um, yesterday was World Meditation Day. That's a good tool to use. So there's taking deep breaths. There's going for walks in nature. There's talking about your feelings. There's therapy. There's art therapy. There's... Um, Learning to accept our anxiety as a natural part of life. There's all of these different tools that you can use and find out there to help when mental health issues arise. I'm gonna look uh, online and see if my old dear friend Nick Offerman is on is on here somewhere. Oh, there he is. That's what I'm, oh, he's clean shaven. <laughs> Hello there. When I'm just drinking you in, it just takes, it always takes me a minute to just drink you in. That's the joy of character actors. You never know what you're going to end up with. That's right. This is what I've ended up with. Say, are you, are you playing Bukowski coming up soon? I could do Bukowski. I could do like a, an evil killer clown. Ooh, that gave me shivers. Right? <laughs> you really, you, you, you're coming to us direct from your wood shop. I am, in fact, yeah, I'm here uh, working on a few personal things to keep myself from going bananas. Talk to me about how making things uh, helps your mental health. This is, a, I'll, I'll kind of nutshell this. My, I grew up in a wonderful big family in Illinois. My mom and dad grew up on farms a few miles from each other. And I grew up on three acres of cornfield right between the two farms they grew up on. Wow. So it's Big spread out family and everybody is wonderfully practical, like Little House on the Prairie, but with television and baseball cards. And so growing up, the women and men of, of my redoubtable family, everybody cooks, everybody sews, everybody gardens, everybody's a carpenter, everybody's a mechanic. We mainly did it because that's the old fashioned way to live a valuable life, that's frugality. Um, when you have a family, you can band together. Many hands make light work. So I just grew up with with these skills. And of course, as a kid, I complained about them a great deal. I, mm. I 
I didn't want to be out, uh, you know, in the garden or, or cutting the grass or what have you, or shingling the shed. Uh, I wanted to be watching cartoons. And so uh, I, I never I never thought about it and said, oh, working as an actor is very brutal. Um, it's, it's a horrible business. There's going to be a lot of rejection. Why don't I keep making things as a carpenter with my tools as a sort of sort of Zen uh, escape, a retreat from the superficial world of show business? It just organically happened that way. Um, it used to be a way to make money. Like I needed beer as a 25 year old, <laughs> so I put my hand and turned that into beer. Mm -hmm. Then, as, as I matured and needed beer less. Um, I still needed this sort of calm or, you know, I needed to, to uh, relieve my stress, mm. uh, especially even when things are going great in show business, it's still very stressful mm -hmm. or can be. And so I just learned that by, uh, by manipulating objects for me, by making things out of wood, I get the same sort of, uh, Zen calm from cooking as well. And I think the reason is when it, when I break it down, it's because I'm engaging in a bite size way. I'm engaging the problem solving, uh, technology that the mm -hmm. human being is equipped with, mm -hmm. whether I'm making a stool or a table or a canoe or a blueberry pie, they all involve a list of ingredients certain uh, steps of manipulation that that have to be carefully adhered to or you, you're going to screw it up um, and ruin your beautiful materials. And so you have to um, you, you have to shut off distractions, the distractions of the world. You have to shut off any other channels that might get your attention, which these days means leave your leave your phone in the truck. Um, and, I, and I just That's the title of your next book leave your phone in the truck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, for me, that's, the, that's kind of the answer to your question is like, it, um, it engages the, my problem solving. It's, it's the same thing as doing a jigsaw puzzle, just more complicated. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you don't just have a, a puzzle. You have a delicious pie or a table upon which to eat your pie. That's amazing. I play a lot of tennis and for me, tennis works in the same way where there is a, uh, I don't know how to describe it other than Zen. I don't really know a whole lot about Zen, but when I am playing tennis, there's just simply not room in my head for worry about other things because I'm so busy breathing, being in the moment. There's so much to focus on. There's, there's footwork and turning and the, and the, the circles, the spirals that you're making, you gotta keep your eye on the ball. You can't kind of half focus on the ball. It has to be laser-like focus on the, on the ball and then where your opponent is. So there's just this constant stimuli that keep you in the moment. And then I'll play and it's an hour and 40 minutes later. And I'm like, oh, where did that go? And my anxiety has gone down and um, I, I have more tools to, to meet the world. So I imagine when you're making a canoe, it's, it works in a similar way. Very much. I mean, uh, and it, it's, it's what loosely people, I've heard people refer to as being in the zone, mm -hmm. as it were. And you've, you've just reminded me of something. I've gone into the, uh, the shipping area and yeah, it's not where I thought it was. There's a quote that I'll just butcher. Um, Somewhere <clears throat> in my book, Gumption, there's a quote by this, uh, this uh, uh, psychology scientist from the early 70s, from the early 70s, mind you, Okay. Uh, that basically says a surplus of information creates a paucity of attention. Basically, wow. Which I think is so applicable. Wow. Uh, the more information we have especially coming in through the channels like what we're doing right now mm. the less w the human animal is able to focus on mm. any given any one thing we're like oh, mm. oh but i need oh, but the thing and um and so i think that 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 plays into this idea of finding something that you love to do that you would that you would pay to do you mm. know so yeah. nick um we uh, 
one of the things we ask people, I and mean, you've been talking about the tool of making things, and we've been talking about that. Is there anything else you can offer the good folks watching uh, in this time of tremendous anxiety, something that's been working for you over the last two, two and a half months to help keep your head on straight and uh, that, that might be a, a valuable guide, a, a, a signpost, a, a lighthouse for those watching? Sure. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a couple of things. One minor silver lining in this strange time um, that's, that's, you know, uh, intense and, and tragic for some people is that by uh, sort of doing our civic duty and staying home as much as possible and, and keeping ourselves distant from other people, um, for the first time in my adult life, uh, my wife and I, are enjoying our house in a way that we're never just at our house where you know we work so hard to afford this this you know beautiful shelter um and so to simply do things like cook together and mm. and spend spend domestic time together that's sort of been engineered out of our lives you know we're both busy actors we don't have kids and so um by and large, during the working year, uh, we do a lot less cooking and like sitting down to a meal because mm. you can have engineered these days, you can get perfectly good, anything you want to eat, you can have it delivered, you know, it's all that kind of thing. So to just enjoy our house and like sit and read a book at all the places in my house that I've often thought, Boy, I'd love to sit and read a book right there someday. <laughs> but you um, never actually have, and now this gives affords you the opportunity. Yeah, and then and then coupled with outside, I mean, we're uh, we have a little fountain in our backyard where we'll go out and sit and just be fascinated by the bird traffic coming through, and whatever mm -hmm. that means. If if you live in a place where you don't have a backyard, maybe there's a little park. Maybe there's just one plant maybe there's a tree or shrub or and and if you don't have that you can grow them um you can get mm -hmm. caterpillars that you can grow watch turn into butterflies you can grow plants on your windowsill and for me that brings me so much solace and hope the fact that that i can plant a strawberry plant and it will still you know uh, grow to reproduce fruit mm. that tells me that, that the world will still keep spinning and there will be strawberries. Nick, thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, very busy uh, strawberry filled, hummingbird filled schedule to chat with us. It means a lot to the, to the listeners. Pleasure. It's my pleasure, Rain. It, it's always a joy to see you and talk to you. And I love your soul pancake, uh, your whole mission. And so th thank you for what you do. Right on, man. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Much love to you. Love to Say you. Say hi to Megan. So long. All right. Bye-bye. Right. How about that? Nick Offerman. What a wise gem. What a wise gem of a human being. So uh, much love to you all. Thank you for tuning in to Hey There Human. This was a thank you to our wonderful guest, Nick Offerman. Uh, what a great person and uh, had a great time. Thanks so much, guys. Hey there, human.